Moving on to 1.5, uh, superintendent's recommendation approval of out-of-state travel to St. Paul, Minnesota by Classroom Teachers Association on April the 18th through the 21st, 2018. This is the one that was on our agenda maybe last, last month uh, that the Classroom Teachers Association, uh, the dates had changed. The only thing my understanding with this is that the district is responsible is um, uh, substitute teachers. So the, the classroom teachers will pay for all the rest of their stuff. We just have to get substitute teachers for that period of time for three days or whatever that is. Any questions about that? Uh, okay, I see you. I got my glasses off, sorry. <laughs> How are you, Gina? How many teachers are going? And from what level? Good evening. Um, yes, there'll be uh, two teachers, uh, Barb McDowell, president of the Classroom Teachers Association, and Jason Malmberg, who is the current uh, bargaining chair. Uh, it's a National Education Association uh, grant, if you will that is in conjunction with, thank you, with the Colorado Education Association. And the good news is um, Classroom Teachers Association were selected by Colorado Education Association, uh, mainly because of the work that the uh, bargaining team is doing with the community outreach, which is one of the uh, turnaround community engagement goals. So they were actually um, handpicked and uh, two teachers, like I said, actually there's another teacher, Danielle from the Adams City High School. Um, who's a bargainer in the wings. Um, those are the three teachers that will be going, uh, including myself and the head bargainer um, coordinator from Colorado Education Association. So we have three teachers out Thursday and Friday. We travel the evening of when, uh, Wednesday, I believe, the 18th. And then it's an all-day session on Saturday. We all return back to Colorado on Sunday. Uh, the bargaining for the common good really takes a look at how do we include our community members and our students in what's best for kids and how do we um, incorporate that, if at all, into our bargaining. So there'll be three teachers Thursday and Friday, I believe they have subs, and then we all return to Colorado. They'll be back in business on Monday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Moving on to 1.6, superintendent's recommendation, approval to purchase flyer app, <coughs> excuse me, to support family engagement communication efforts district-wide and at all Adams 14 schools. Is there any discussion about that one? Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, do we have someone here who can uh, give us a, a I, briefing? I know that Mr. Martinez, uh, he, did he told me he was gonna have someone here. Yes, okay, we good. Yes, we do. We do have somebody can answer some questions. Could we questions. have, a, a, again, a short summary? Yeah. Thank you. I have one. I have one uh, copy of that already. So good evening, everybody. I'm Sheila Burke, Director of Federal Programs. So along with Jesse Martinez, he's up preparing for a meeting upstairs. And I have Zubin with us, who is our consultant from Flyer, so we're prepared to answer any questions that you may have on the, the application that we're proposing. Do you want to pull my summary? Yeah, I would love to. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Zubin Bastani. I'm the founder and CEO of Flyer. And Flyer is the world's only family engagement app to date uh, that's built from a family perspective. To date, most technology solutions are built with communication in mind. There are notification systems that are designed to make things easy. However, that does not always reach the families. <laughs> Flyer is built on delivering uh, equity in education through access. We customize our platform to be branded for the school, fully translated for the family, and delivers a personalized experience for each family based on the groups AKA the classrooms, the outside activities and the organizations that can impact the families. Flyer is also the only platform that allows for human language translation. We know that machine translation, more commonly known as Bing or Google Translate, is not good enough for education. So Flyer is contracted with a network of certified human translators and interpreters 
that are able to translate using human language interpreters and deliver interpreted and translated messages to groups or to specific individual families in their language, which typically takes about five to 20 minutes for those, for those interpretations to be delivered. Families also have the ability to respond to messages. This gives families the ability to have a private and secure two-way conversation with the staff member and messages are translated bi-directionally. So staff are receiving messages in their language and sending in their language, whereas families are receiving in their language and sending in their language. Uh, flyers also designed to drive participation and deliver resources that are community oriented. So through Flyers unique uh, three tier structure of allowing the district, the schools and group classrooms to all be able to communicate on one platform for families we can also bring in outside community partners that help treat the whole child. So Flyer has a content library that's rich to, for behavior, social emotional learning, and um, substance abuse and cyber safety. And then it also asks the schools to recommend their own resources and integrate their own programming into the platform to bring lift to the programs that you guys are already invested in. I might be too long-winded. I get pretty passionate about this. So. <laughs> We recognize the need that came up from working with our family liaisons, our school principals, and from our Board of Education goals on communication. So we, uh, Jesse and I, researched several different um, applications that we could possibly look at to help support the need that we had in the district. We met on three or four different occasions with our directors here, our, uh, some of our principals, our managers, and other department leads to go through the presentation specifically when we found Flyer so that they could ask questions to see if this would be a good fit for our district. Uh, we brought Zubin back in a couple additional times and reached out to other districts that currently offer this and we spoke to the schools that have this to see their feedback, what they felt worked really well and what they felt like their areas of improvement were. At that time, our teams made a recommendation and felt like this would be a good fit for our district which is where the soup rec is coming from. Uh, I have, uh, I think, uh, sir, I have a question for you. Um, you know, convenience uh, in, in today's world is a highly valued commodity. And uh, you said that there's, for the human translation service, there's a five to 20 minute delay. So, uh, you know, in our district, we have a large number of uh, primary Spanish speakers, and we have a, a handful of uh, third language native speakers. Uh, I have two questions for you. One is, uh, will this translate uh, any, not any language, but most languages? And the second one is, uh, if a family is trying to use this uh, flyer from home, uh, is there uh, this time delay between every uh, communication exchange? You know, if you're conducting a, co a conversation, uh, is there a, this time delay between each party's statement? Right, great question. So, so my quick commercial was uh, not totally comprehensive. Flyer, Flyer gives schools and staff the ability to translate in three different ways. One is using manual translation. This is instant. Uh, this is when you have a multi, multilingual or bilingual uh, staff member. They can simply compose their message in multiple languages and send those messages instantly. Uh, the second is using machine translation. This is that Google, typical Google translation. Again, that's an instant form of translation and communication. Um, what we're seeing is that a f the, the using the automated human translation, that is a vast improvement over a staff member having to take a document or take a translation, going and hunting down somebody in their building and the, or sending it to a district translator, waiting, which typically could be anywhere from 24 to you know, a week to get those translations back. So those are, that's the number that no, we're improving. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm using uh, very generalized district okay. translations, but she it, does it in minutes. In minutes. <laughs> So this is giving every staff member in the, sorry, I didn't mean to throw under the bus. Um, this is designed to give every staff member in the district the ability to have 
near instant access to human language translation regardless of their communication abilities. Does that answer your question? So when you're talking about the delay, that's only if you're selecting the automated human translation service. If you're going to use manual translation or machine translation, those deliveries are instant and responses from families back to the staff are also instant. Are, are these like uh, click, click options? Yes. You click on option one, two, or three? Yes. So there's actually <coughs> some defaults preset based on how the district wants this organized and arranged and to give priority to the different methods of translation. So is this program can... considered to be uh, user friendly? Yes. Yes. So again, designed with the family in mind. So <laughs> this is built for non-technical users. Everything is set up like a Gmail. So most schools are very familiar with Google Apps for Education. So we've designed the, the sending functionality to be just like Gmail. And notifications are delivered to the staff member's email box when a message comes through to alert them. And they can respond to that email to deliver messages back to those families. Um, Please know, too, that this is not going to take the place of, of our district translator of our communications team. It's there as a, another support. So as teachers need to give information right away to a parent on um, their data, grades, how this student's day went, if parents need quick access to the, the teachers without having to go through Infinite Campus or through their district email, this is another tool for them to use where they can find district information, school information, and their classroom information all in one place. So if they have events that are going on in the district, there's an event specific at their school such as um, a, a book contest or a book fair, this will pop up on there so that parents have quick access to it, similar to Facebook. Um, and we found that through our surveys that our parents want to have something that they can use on their mobile devices. And this helps to meet that need. So would the kids have access to this also? Or it's just for the parents? It's really designed primarily for the parents. Okay. And to answer your question, we, the human translation is available in 30 languages, Spanish, Vietnamese, Arabic, Farsi are definitely included in that. And then the machine translation is available in 130 languages. Is any other school district using this app? Yeah, yeah. So we are, we're based here in Denver. Uh, Denver DPS is my home. So we're uh, spread out through about 60 schools in Denver Public Schools. Uh, Jefferson County Public Schools also uses it in some of their schools. And then uh, we're working with several charter school networks as well, um, and then school districts throughout the United States. And have y'all looked to see any, through DPS and Jeffco, um, any write-ups or any um, things good or bad about this company? Yes, so once we met with Subin, we then reached out and we asked Subin to provide us with names of the actual districts and schools that they've been working with. Um, Jesse Martinez reached out to those and we were able to do phone conferences with those folks to be able to ask questions that our department needs, um, our directors and managers had around, their, uh, around this product uh, from their perspective. So we were able to get all of those answered. <coughs> the districts were also able to share with us the pros and cons that they felt and we were able to ask Zubin about those and how they're resolving those and what they're doing. Um, I don't have those in front of me, but I can provide them to you because they're upstairs in Look, Jesse's office. Yeah, can you do that for our Friday updates? And I'm looking at um, your flyer page that get results, and it says reach 75% of families within a month. We got 7,500 students, so only 5,600 students will get that within the month. So 1,800 students won't have that access in that first month. So. How are we, we losing 1,800? So this is an onboarding process. We're not losing them. This is within the first month, within the first four weeks of us announcing flyer to your school district community. We will have 75% of those families engaging three to four times a week on this platform. That number continues to increase to about 85% within two months and then continues to increase after that. So we still losing 1,800 students the first month. No, uh, this is so. Com so there is an onboarding process with any sort of technology, right? So we need to onboard families onto this program, targeting a back to school night. We expect to see th those are minimum numbers. I always go with conservative figures. So 
at a minimum, you will be onboarding 75% of your families within 30 days of going live with this. Depending on how many families we're driving to back to school night, those numbers will be higher. So our intention is not to miss any family. We don't want to let any family get out of our, get out of our grasp. And does the district in that infinite campus, um, I know we're not 100%, so how are we going to improve infinite campus and then you're starting up a new, trying to start up this company too. So. so Infinite Campus is not designed for a communication tool, which is part of where the need comes from. So we have it where we can, uh, parents can access it through the parent portal, and that access link will be available on the Flyer app if that's the direction that we choose to go in. So parents can get to Infinite Campus, they can check attendance, check grades, because that link will be provided on uh, this this tool as well as like board policies that we want to encourage our parents to look at or events so they'll have links to the Adams 14 homepage as well right but I think I didn't say it right emphasis campus is parents they can look at different things correct right grades attendance behavior but it's not a it's not a hundred percent accurate some parents some students parents can pull up their um, kids in different schools and different things in that nature but what i'm saying is if, if it was campus is not a hundred percent correct with our students and the parents can look it up what makes us feel that this is going to be even better if we having trouble with one now you want to add another one right so i definitely hear your point and you're accurate that we need to improve that part of it so it would be done through a communication plan that we would develop and really now how do we make sure that all of our parents have access to Infinite Campus, know the tools and how to navigate it, as well as how to navigate Flyer if that's the direction we choose to go. If we choose not to use Flyer, then we still need to go through and develop a communication plan to be able to make sure that all of our parents, thank you Cameron, have access to Infinite Campus and know how to navigate the tool so that they are in touch with our students' data and information. May I add something there? So um, get it, giving parents access to grades and performance information is one of the foundations that we established this on. So we've been able to show that when, fam when school districts and schools use Flyer, we're giving families easier access to, gain, to, to be delivered to IC, to their student information system to gain that access, that we can show about a 300% lift in parents diving into their student information system to gain, uh, to be able to view that content and that information because Flyer is a more accessible way of accessing that information. What is Lyft? Lyft is an increase over their current, uh, over their current performance. Uh, uh, Ms. Burke, could, could you, uh, do you have any idea how many of our families uh, do not have uh, adequate access to electronic communication to be able to use infinite campus and do we expect that same number to not have access to flyer um, I don't know if I have an exact number for you Dr. Hyde on how many of our parents don't have access um, some of that changes as we have cell services that are sometimes temporary as that's come up with our family liaisons and our surveys that we've completed. So we would have to look at when they have that, what's another form that they could have access to the information and are we providing any and all access so that they can make sure they're supporting our students and our district. So I don't have a number for you. Um, would you excuse me, would you guess, I want to guess, 1%, 5%, 10% or higher? Um, I would say around 5%, and please know that would be a guess based off of our information with our, our liaisons and our outreach. And, and does Flyer uh, address that situation or not? Yeah, we do. So like I said earlier, we, we focus on access to educational equity. So that means reaching families however we can reach them. So Flyer's platform allows one message to be delivered across multiple mediums. Those include obviously smartphones through our app, but we also are able to keep Facebook and social media sites updated, websites updated, and reach families via text, call, email, and um, yeah, 
text call and email. Uh, so, Ms. Burke, um, I heard you say you and uh, Mr. Martinez. Did anybody reach out to the teachers union, uh, the principals, administration? Did anybody reach out to the community to get a, a survey and find out if they want this, how this will look, what is their input? Did anybody get an input of anybody else besides you and Mr. Martinez? Yes, yeah, so we met with um, the directors here. We had some of our managers in different departments. We met with, um, I'd have to go back to the sign-in sheet. I can't remember if there was a principal there. I don't believe we involved the union, um, and I can't remember if we had community members. I don't believe so. Uh, the need came from our parent satisfaction survey that we hosted last year, and we're getting ready to deploy again in April for this school year. Um, and the need is, is that they wanted to be able to communicate with us through their mobile devices. And that they also felt our community, um, as it's come up as a board goal, that we weren't uh, communicating effectively. So we're trying to make sure that we're matching their needs and making sure that we're pushing specific platforms that our community is asking for. And that comes from the, the survey results. You good, Dr. Hyde? I am, thank you. Connie? Yep. Mr. Rolla? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, um, we do have a demo available as well that we can provide you with a link to. And so if you go to flyerschoolapp.com slash demo dash app, it will give you a brief little demo. And I can send a link to um, Ms. Monica so that she can provide it to you which is the same link that many of our directors, managers, and department leads used to trial the app as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 1.7, superintendent's recommendation allocation of funds to increase 1.0 table to authorize personnel for a transition teacher for the transition slash school to work alliance program any any conversation is yes. this go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. is this primarily for high school students and is that in Adams High School or Lester Arnold Robert Fred Tamalan director of student services no this is not for high school students this is actually for 18 to 21 year old students so if you um, um, uh, uh, the Individuals with Disability Education Act says that we serve students from birth to 21. Um, at the high school, they are up to age 18. Once they are eligible for their diploma, we can still continue to serve these students up until age 21. And that program is actually housed here at the ESS building. It is not housed at any one of the high schools. So um, oftentimes these kids are kids with um, intellectual disabilities, but we serve all students with disabilities through the uh, Transition and the School to Work Alliance program. Um, is anybody from HR in here? We don't have anyone here. <clears throat> um, and I see you leaving Friday the 13th, the last day. Yeah, well, yes, I am. It was good working with you, and I just want to personally say thank you for what you did for this district, bringing the uh, special education department up to a high standards for the state and that was really um, I really appreciate that personally and you know and I wish you your best in wherever you're going which is I already know but I wish you the best and thank you but I noticed since you leave in uh, in our personnel uh, I see that four um, special education teachers is leaving the district so that's why I was asking, is there any HR in here? Because if, um, if yourself is leaving, and if I'm looking at personnel correct, we're leaving, we losing four personnel education. I'm trying to figure out, are they um, putting those positions out there? Because if you're leaving Friday, next Friday, and I'm looking at day end date, June 1st, uh, I think we're behind the ball. And I didn't see none of those positions on the district uh, um, job board. Um, <clears throat> so every time a position comes available, we immediately um, turn around and do a job requisition and get it posted as soon as we um, possibly can. I did attend um, the state um, um, uh, job fair 
um, that occurred last week, particularly recruiting special education teachers. But I would say this, not just the special education teachers, I'd say we have about four psychologist positions opening, one speech language pathologist, two occupational therapists, um, a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing. Um, and then probably after non-renewals, there'll maybe be a handful um, more as well too. Um, I saw quite a few candidates, um, some viable candidates, and then this right now, I think that's where Jeanette is, is in UNC. And uh, my assistant director, Kim Sini, is up there interviewing candidates um, currently um, right now. Um, our department is primarily responsible for the related services, and the school buildings are responsible for hiring their own special education teachers. Um, I can say that I went through what one of the things that we did post is called a pool. It's a special ed pool. So, and we had that up since January, so we could begin to recruit special education teachers without needing to have a job um, specific posting for them. Um, I do know my assistant and I went through about 30 of those applicants, found about uh, about 15 or so to be viable applicants, meaning they had the right licensures, and we have passed those names on to principals as well, too. It's like a catch-22. You leave it, <clears throat> but you help it. And that's good. So I really appreciate that. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I, I believe very strongly in the work that we've done in Adams 14. Um, I am so excited to say that we did go out of um, needs immediate assistance to need support. So from that red to the yellow category, it was primarily because of the growth factor that our special education students uh, made. And I have to say that we, um, as a district, made some of the largest gains in growth in special education um, across the whole district. Um, I am saying uh, I am um, moving on to Denver Public Schools as their director of special education. Um, I uh, um, uh, resisted quite a bit, but uh, after the fourth offer, um, um, I went ahead and accepted. And part of this is because I see this as a calling. This is a calling, and this is my future as an individual with a disability, as family members with disability. And here's an opportunity for me to um, really um, perhaps have a larger um, venue and a larger platform to be able to make differences um, across the state. We'll be serving 15,000 kids with a disability in Denver with over 2,000 staff members. So um, I, 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 I love Adams 14. I really did not want to um, um, leave here, but I really see this as a calling to be able to um, um, perhaps um, bring a, a bigger um, um, and a better world for individuals with disabilities across the state. Well, I know um, last night me and Mr. Roller was at the DAG meeting here in the building, and Kim gave a, a great presentation, and I believe she um, came back from San Diego, and that presentation she gave was good about the kids. So I just want to say good. personally again, um, thank you. You put a lot of hard work in to make this district. Um, I think we all up here say we're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you the yeah. best. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Any other questions about that? Moving on to 1.8, superintendent's recommendation approval of in-state overnight travel to Fort Collins, Colorado to attend constructive, constructing meeting training from July the 4th through the 8th. Any discussion? Is this how uh, in minute or two of okay. how many how many people and what do you hope to accomplish? Okay, so this is we're sending about three people, sending three people, not about um, to Fort Collins to for training for to create our own trainers in the district. We currently have one trainer in the district to train all secondary schools. Um, constructing meaning is part of the ELD plan to ensure that all students in all content areas are receiving adequate support to access content no matter, regardless of their native language. And so constructing meaning, all secondary teachers need to be trained in it. Um, I think that's part of our OCR agreement. Um, and to ensure, right now we have about a 121 teachers that have been trained over the past three years. And with turnover, we need to make sure that as new teachers come into the district, we're able to train them. It's a five-day training. Um, if we are able to send these three coaches, one, um, 
one from the high school, one from Adam City Middle School, and Tracy Rudy, who's a district TOSA, then we're able to make sure that we have a trainer in every building and we can adequately support not only the training, but ensure that teachers are implementing the strategies and getting coaching throughout the year. Excuse, could you repeat the, you said there are five, Adam City High School? Three, so one Three. from Adam City High School, Adam City Middle School, and a district TOSA. I don't think, um, Dr. Hyde, could you give us a little background of yourself? Let us, you know, bus that know who you are and, oh. ask, you know, because I'm trying to figure out myself. Why I'm here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because it's the first for me to see you in front of us, which is good. Uh -huh. I appreciate it, but. So um, my name is Tanya Lopez, and I'm currently serving as interim ELD coordinator. Um, I served in this role in 2015 um, before I moved to Adam City Middle School as the assistant principal. And so um, I have been asked to come in and make sure that we finish the year off strong and start making sure that we are headed in the right direction. I don't think Dr. Hyde knew. I, I, I have <laughs> met you in a different setting. Yes. And I, I was putting that together okay. as Mr. Said, Thomas why spoke. Why is the assistant principal of Adam City Middle School asking for this? Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And also, her family goes way back from the community, and I think she's a product of District 14 also. Yep. I'm a 2001 graduate and a former teacher at Adams City High School. Right. And her dad worked here also for many years. My mom was a para at Central, and my dad um, worked in transportation. transportation. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I, I got one question. Okay. Just one. This grant is the... Burke, this grant is the grant that throws over the, the apple that rolls over, correct? Yes. Okay. And but these are the only three <coughs> individuals in the district, so there's no other, we don't see no other potential and other teachers that probably want to be coaches or, because uh, my personal opinion is you cannot have enough. I agree, and um, we've only had one for the past three years, and so we'll be tripling the number that we have, but I want to make sure that it's sustainable. So what has to happen is these people are going to go to training, and then they have to shadow our current trainer for a year before they're able to lead their own training. So it's a really great model. Um, I, I agree. I believe in teacher leadership, and we need to make sure that we're empowering um, teachers who want to to grow, and this is a great opportunity for that to happen, but I want to make sure we're doing it slowly and in a way that we can make sure that these people are supported um, as they're beginning to train other people. And do we, which I know we don't, but is there such a, like a stipend or something that we can uh, make things, um, um, I, I think about what's going on with the teacher strikes and going on throughout the country. And I want to say for myself, how do we do or give suggestions while we're going through the budget but coaches get stipends for this, coaches get stipends for that. We go beyond the, the, the just saying you got to do it because you're doing it. And then some, that, to me, a lot of people don't want to do it because they want to do it to, to patent their resume or they want to do it for their heart. But if it's something in, in, that we can do to say a stipend for this, a stipend for that, a yeah. stipend something to give them incentives to want to do the program something for uh the coaches or whatever is at the high school the middle schools the elementary schools um uh, stuff that, uh not stuff but things that we can do as a board mm -hmm. to try to help teachers and uh coaches if they do an extra this, that's just my opinion. And I appreciate that, and I think that any way that we can show teachers that we value their work is always important. And whenever these teachers do trainings outside of the day, they also they always get paid for it. But um, anything you can always do to help teachers is always appreciated. Well, can somebody, uh, Dr. Brego, can your team submit the coaches that sit in the high schools, the middle schools, and uh, the elementary schools, and the different coaches? Uh, if they coaching somebody, they should, if somebody, following somebody for a year, I think that should be something incentive. If a principal has a mentor as a principal, 
that should be something. If a assistant principal has something, mm -hmm. uh, a mentor, if we if we don't invest in our own, and that's that to me that's the biggest problem I see in this district. And and you coming back to the district is is to me is something special because you're giving back. This is this is home to you. This is what you want to see strive. But if we can invest in our own, keep our own, and don't have to have like Mr. Allen Fratton leave, that we didn't send different teachers to different conferences and this and that, we not investing in our own, and then the system failed. If you think about how many principals we go through, we don't put, we don't invest in our own. And I keep saying that because the system breaks. You bring in a new principal, a new this, guess what happened? That principal want to bring in their system. Then the teachers don't like that system. Then we're going back and forth, back and forth. If we invest in our own, we can, we can keep the turnaround as far as teachers low, principals low. And I encourage anybody to, uh, to advance their career but then the next person behind them should know that system to move right into it. We don't do that here in Adams 14, and I have seen that since I've been here. And, it's, and we lose a lot of good people that way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions about travel? Thank you, Tanya. Okay, thank you. So let's move on to 1.9. Superintendent's recommendation, approval of in-state overnight travel to Vail, Colorado for the FBLA state competition on April the 17th through the 20th. I believe that's about 20 students. Yeah. Um, I do want to make note that uh, we're, we're sending 20 students. This is the first time that we actually had 20 students qualify for state through the FBLA program. So high school business, which is a CT track uh, at the high school, has our DECA, and then we have our FBLA, which is really designed for our high school um, career focused students. Um, so FBLA had 20 students at the regional competition qualify 20 students to go to the state competition. Um, as you recall, maybe from last summer, we had one student make it from state onto nationals. Um, unfortunately, she did not place at nationals, but we're hoping now with a larger number of students going to state, um, the hope was that we'd have more students being able to qualify for the national conference or competition that will take place at the end of June, early July. So I had a couple of questions, Chris. Um, male, female students? Yeah, so it's a combination of both. I would say right now I don't have the exact breakdown. I, I could probably look in my notes to see the exact breakdown of students, but um, our high school business program is fairly, um, you know, diversified between the, the, the two populations. So, you know, 50% male, 50% female. Uh, I don't have the exact breakdown, but um, I would say it's probably 50-50 between male and female students. And, and so that, how many sponsors are we taking, chaperones? chaperones. Um, so we have Karen, who's the teacher, and then we'll have one um, chaperone, one male chaperone that will uh, be part of the, uh, you know, tra travel as well. Either myself or another, another chaperone. It's a little bit harder for me to get out of the building, but uh, there will be a male chaperone as well. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Duran, uh, uh, last month, um, I interviewed some students at uh, Prairie View High School in, in mock business interviews for okay, okay. so forth. And I wondered, does do we do that in Adams 14, and is and is that part of this program, or is this something else? No, it, it would be. So the students um, actually, they're you know they do uh, participate uh, in mock interviews. Um, I think they had them earlier in the year. Um, I think they take they took place towards the end of first semester. Um, so the way that the high school pro, uh, business program is designed, um, it's a four-year track program. So um, year one for our freshman students is kind of broken down between um, leadership development and then a, like a business um, it's leadership and then wealth management. So right now we're in the wealth management component of, of, this, of the program for our first-year students. Uh, our second-year students are in the principles of economics. So we have semester one principles of business and then principles of economics for semester two uh, which is year two of the program so next year when we um, build in year three of the program those students will re really be learning about the principles of accounting um, and that's really the precedence of the, or the 
foundation of year three is just really focusing on the accounting component. So, uh, what's what's the uh, uh, follow through from year one to year four for among the students? It's hard to say because we're still building. Um, so ideally, what we do is we cast the net to where we recruit about ninety students for year one, uh, with the anticipation of bringing back sixty students for year two. Year three would be about thirty, ending year four with about 15 students. Now, one of the things that I've been encouraging and really uh, pushing the high school business teacher to think about is how do we maybe look at casting that net wider? Because I'm worried that as we build in year three and year four, um, if those students leave for you know many reasons of why they may leave the district, that number of population of students that we can pull from by the time they get to year four is pretty limited. So um, one of the things that we're looking at is how do we expand at the beginning, you know, year one and year two, so that way we have more students kind of moving through the program, uh, so that way we don't rely on those 15 students that maybe started in year one, you know, and we only get to 15 by the year end of year four. And when those students take the, the various courses that you mentioned, accounting and economics and so forth, are those uh, full, uh, do they get full student credit uh, toward, are those count toward their graduation? They do. Requirements, so, or are they some extracurricular? It, right now, they're being counted as electives. <coughs> and, um, what we're, I was just actually talking to Mr. Thompson right now about, you know, as we start thinking about how might these classes fit in as academic electives, um, there are some components that we need to make sure that we're following through on to ensure that we're awarding the correct credit towards graduation. Now, currently, we have the tax help, so the program where the students go through um, and do taxes during tax season, which is our um, tax help program, those students actually are concurrently enrolled in uh, Accounting 101, which is a concurrent enrollment class. So we have right now sophomores and juniors earning college credit while they're earning high school credit. Um, so they're duly enrolled uh, in, in both classes. So uh, the ultimate goal is to eventually move those high school business classes to count as ac academic elective, which is a requirement to get out of high school. Thanks. Uh -huh. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Moving on to 1.10, superintendent's recommendation, approval to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Commerce City Urban Renewal Authority regarding property tax increment revenue agreement. This is the one that uh, we've, been, we've been having conversation as the board. Uh, we helped write that agreement, so you know, We'll, we'll bring that up during um, executive session also, but if you have any questions about it, you know, I've been, I sit on the urban renewal district, so uh, maybe I can answer some of those questions or nobody from the city's here, so. Any questions? Okay. So uh, 1.11 superintendent's recommendation approval of the contract with ABS Enterprises has been pulled off. So that won't be on the agenda for uh, Tuesday. With that, have we had all of our questions answered about all this stuff that we were talking about? Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. There is a need for an executive session. Um, so we'll move into executive session under CRS 246402. Uh, four uh, Prince four, Prince B, legal advice, board to conference with an attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific matters. And CRS 246402, Prince four, F, personnel contract addendum. So I need a motion to move into You need a motion. Session. Pardon me? You do need a motion. Yes. Motion to move into exec. Second. Any discussion? I roll call, Monica, please. Mr. Archuleta? Aye. Dr. Hyde? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. 